Hey guys, what is going on? This is Daryl DS, and welcome to Higarashi When They Cry, or Higarashi Nanaku Kronia. Nanaku Kronia. The 07 expansion presents Welcome to Hinamezawa. And this game has been on my list for quite some time, as I am hoping to finally get into it. Config looks good. I hope, anyway. Alright. Let us begin, Higurashi, because apparently the second chapter, Watanagashi, is going to be coming out on the 13th of uh, November, I believe, and uh, I really want to get started with this, play this, Steins Gate and Undertale at the same time to keep you guys contented, hopefully. So we're going to get started here with Higurashi. Oni Kakushi, welcome to the world of Higurashi when they cry. The Oni Kakushi arc will be the opening inviting you to this new world. Don't play tough. Please, just enjoy life in Hinamazawa to the fullest. The difficulty is extremely high, but I hope you will enjoy the reward. Let's go. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, I swear. Please do not lament. I will forgive you even if the world will not forgive you. Please do not lament. I will forgive you even if you do not forgive the world. So please tell me, what will it take it what will it take for you to forgive me? Fertica Bursenka. Burn Castell. This is a work of fiction, and it's unless the actual persons are in the conditions are completely coincidental. Eight, 1983, the summer of the 50th year of the Showa era. If I was going to be ripped apart anyways, having my body ripped apart would have been far better. I trusted her. No, I still trust her. Even to this very moment, I trust her. But, I'm starting to realize. I only wanted to trust her because I refused to accept the truth. That it was only, it was as if only trying to convince myself in such a silly sobbing voice. And those tears, those tears making a mess of my face. That mechanical repetitious sound finally stilled and everything fell silent. Only the cry of the cicadas remained. Annoyingly loud, and yet, I felt as if I could hear, their, hear her voice, but that's not possible. She's no longer speaking. The only one crying is me. She never cried. Even when she repeated those words over and over, she never expressed any emotion because there were none to show. If she had no tears to shed for me, then I should need to shed any for her. Then why this pain, my eyes getting moist? Why is this happening? I still wanted to believe I hadn't been split apart. That's enough, right? Inside me, an inner voice whispered, whispered gently. My spirit has suffered enough. And countless times I'd waver over whether I should just throw the battered thing away. Except, I stubbornly refused to do that, haven't I? I'd feel better if I just threw it away. Even knowing that, I'd choose to believe it, didn't I? Only I can understand that painful struggle and appreciate it. Hey, me! I've tried more than enough. I'll acknowledge that much. So, isn't that, isn't it all right just to take the easy way out? Besides, I'm not throwing it away. I'm leaving it behind with her, like flowers by a grave. Now then, calm your nerves, even though you can't feel your right arm. Just lift it up. And with every swing, forget a little more. 
That kindness made me happy. That adorable smile brought me joy. I liked petting your head. I loved how demure you were. Because this will be the last time. Because when I swing this down, I'll forget. This is my... First and last, okay for you. Perhaps I really did. Love you. Somebody's been apologizing for a while now. I wonder what she's apologizing for. It felt wrong to eavesdrop, so I, gave, I tried to ignore it. It had been a while since I last went to the city. I only returned to attend a funeral of a relative. Even though I lived there for the last month, until I found a bustle of the city to be overwhelming. Those skyscrapers and the multi-lane roads. The melodicious Keller cacophony of the crosswalk. Even the campaign speeches blaring in front of the station felt nostalgic. The place where I live now isn't nearly as lively. There's only the chirping of the locusts and the babbling of the brooks. And the city, the cry of the Higurashi, the evening cicadas. Rather than making me feel lonely, that quietness had begun to instill a sense of serenity. There's nothing, there's nothing where I'm living now. I don't just mean there aren't any burger joints. There aren't even vending machines. No music stores, no restaurants. No arcades. Even in an ice cream parlor would be unlikely. The nearest town has some stuff like that, but it's an hour away by bike. But come to think of it, it wasn't really that big of a deal. There were, there were music stores and arcades and ice cream parlors, but it wasn't like I ever hung out at any of them. I lived in the city for 10 years and never once been to an ice cream parlor. I should have gone at least once. It's only now I'm starting to regret it that a little. Somebody is still apologizing. Who is she apologizing to? She's apologized so much, so just forgive her already. There's no reason or anyone should ever need to apologize so much. I started to feel a bit annoyed at whoever was refusing to forgive her. No matter how many, how many, no matter how bad the mistake, there's nothing that can't be forgiven. There's no such thing as an irreparable mistake. You just need to be more careful next time. She's still apologizing even now. Then, has she really done something that can't be fixed? I have no idea what she's done, but if it can't be fixed, then that's all the more reason to forgive her. No matter how much she apologizes, nothing will ever change. But even so, she keeps apologizing in such a heartbreaking voice. Hey, you. The one she's apologizing to. Why don't you just go ahead and forgive her? She's apologizing in such a pathetic voice. Keichi. Keichi. We're almost there. Wake up. I was finally roused from my nap from my father's prodding. It seemed the train had made, reached its final stop. We spent hours riding everything from the bullet train to the local routes. It was hard to believe that the landscape beyond the window in the city I was in half the day ago were in the same country. No, they are even the same era.
From there, we take a car deeper into the mountains. Into the woods we go! <laughs> Past where the dense forest and roaching, encroaching on the mountain road suddenly opened up. There, where I live now. Hima Hinamazawa. Ugh, man, those cicadas are going to get really annoying for me, I honestly. This is going to be quite the trip. Even though we are approaching summer, the morning air still had a frigid bite. Although, in exchange, you could fill your lungs up with crisp, clean air. Flipping open the window, I was greeted with a verdant, verdant expanse. Nothing but trees. A verdant expanse, yeah. The neighboring house was far away from the, on the other side. So I was probably the only one enjoying the view and that air. I filled my lungs with another, another deep breath. Since I started living in Hinamazawa, I learned that even the air has its own taste. I quickly finished up getting ready for school and headed downstairs for breakfast. My mother was the one there. My father was nowhere to be seen. He was probably working in there until the early morning. That had a rather unconventional job as a painter. It's such a laid-back profession. Get up when you want, sleep when you want, and work when you want. I was so jealous of that easygoing lifestyle. And even wrote this for the wrote for school that I wanted to be a painter when I grew up. Dad was ecstatic about that. I was just being it was just because it looked easy. I never tell him that though. Mom laid breakfast out on the table. Seaweed, pickled vegetables, raw egg, and grilled salmon. My mom was such a good cook. It was scary. A perfect, immaculate, ideal breakfast. Unlike my dad, who didn't even know what the meaning of the word schedule, my mom never squandered any time or effort. She hummed a little tune as she brought over the miso soup. Uh, it seemed like she was in a good mood today. I'm so happy you've been waking up early since we moved here, Keiji. If I don't wake up early, I won't have time to eat breakfast. Although it was being cute, responding with a wise crack after being praised for being good. Full of rice or half will be enough? Pile it on, woman! <laughs> First I savored the steaming hot rice with the seaweed. I covered it with the egg. Between bites of rice I enjoyed the crunch of the pickles. Not bad at all. Excellent as usual. Watch me, watching me clean my plate, Mom gave me a warm smile. I'm so happy you haven't skipped breakfast ever since we moved here, Keiichi. I was not a morning person when we lived in the city. I slept right into the last minute before school and rarely ate breakfast. Boycotting the breakfast Mom made each morning. Uh, that was probably the only way I could protest being forced to attend cram school. I guess that's what you would call my rebellious phase. I wouldn't so much as look as the breakfast. At the breakfast she woke up early to make every day. If I could go back in time, I'd slap myself. Mindful of time, mindful of the time, Mom rushed me along with a wide grin. Isn't it, isn't it about time to be meeting up with Renachan? Hurry, hurry. Mom seemed really to enjoy the fact that her son was going to school with a girl. Rena is one of my classmates. She really loves looking after people, coming to meet me every day without fail. 
The way I looked at it, a guy my age walking to, a sc walking to school with a girl was just lame. But, well, keeping a classmate waiting for me every day wouldn't be very considerate. Seriously, though, how long does Rena wait for me there every morning? Taking one last gulp of miso soup, I raced for the door. Please thank rena -chan. Please thank rena -chan for the pickles. Come to think of it, those pickles weren't store-bought, were they? If I'd known that, I would have savored them a bit more. Morning! Keiichi kun! Good morning! Her cheerful greeting was as fresh as the morning itself. You're always so early! You should try sleeping in sometime. If I sleep in, I'll keep you waiting. She's so consentious and such a good person. Conscious. If ever it happens, I'll just leave you behind. Kate, you gun, you're so cold. I wait for you all. The, I wait for you all the time. I'll leave you in the dust without looking back. Why are you so mean? Why? Then I had a slightly troubled look on her face. Swing with her was just rather fun because of how quickly your mood changed. I'm kidding. I, I wait for you. With those words, Rena seemed to relax. Her face blushed bright red. Uh, uh, thank you. I'll wait forever until... I'll wait forever until you came, Rena. No matter how long. Uh, uh, f f forever? When it turned bright red, steam rising from her head as her brain short circuited. She's especially weak to the, that's this sort of talk. It's quite rare to find someone less fun to tease. Have you ever read a romance novel, Rena? Huh? I, I, I haven't. Never read any before. From that response, she, I gathered that she was interested in them, but was too embarrassed to actually buy one. I couldn't imagine what kind of happened if she did read one. <laughs> She'd probably turn red and pass out. Oh yeah, message from mom. She says thanks for the pickles. It was nothing. You're welcome. How were they? Salty? They weren't salt. They weren't that salty. Actually, they were pretty. Had a pretty. Uh, they had a pretty light flavor to them. It would have been fine for them to just be honest and say they were good, but apparently I couldn't be that for right. I'd like to ask something before that. Were you the one who pickled them, Rena? Or was it your mom? Huh? Why do you ask? Were, were they too salty? Her attitude completely changed as she began to panic frantically. Rena, was it you, Rena, or was it your mom? Why are you asking who made them? Why? Depending on who made them, my opinion of them might change drastically. Uh, 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 yeah. She counted frantically in her fingers, trying to remember the amount of salt she'd used to pickle them. It wasn't like I was trying to tease her, but I couldn't stop myself. Guys who take pleasure in this kind of thing are probably the worst. Guys like me. Rena nervously opened and closed her mouth over and over, trying to muster up a response. It was me. Delicious. Huh? Pretty good, just like the last ones. They went perfectly with the rice. Her face went bright red again. She was completely spacing out. It truly was a lot of fun to tease her. I pray that Rena never gets taken advantage by some lowlife. Like me. Keep at it, Rena. You'll train until you handle it. I'll train you until you can handle like the average person. Or so I decided for myself. Let's go. If we keep me on waiting, we'll never hear the end of it. 
seeing as she never kept space out otherwise, I called Luna back to reality. Oh wait, this is me. Let's go, if you keep me on waiting, we'll never get to hear the end of it. Seeing as she just kept missing out, otherwise, I called Rena back to reality so we can make our way to school. This strange, easily flustered girl is Rena Ryugu. I've only known her for about a month, but I've come to realize it's not just her name that's strange. Michan, good morning! Coming up to the next rendezvous point, we saw another person waiting for us. Noticing us, she waved. Ah, finally, you two are late. Usually, you're the one who's late. In a stark contrast to diligent Rena. Rena, this one, marched to the beat of her own drum. She's Mian Shonozaki, Mian Shonozaki. For what's worth, she's our senior and head of the class. Morning, Rena. It's been a while. Kei-chan. Years? I was only off for two days. Ha-ha-ha. <laughs> you don't say. You were so much cuter back then. Mian's gaze started at my chest and dropped straight down, focusing on the point between my pants. My legs, uh. So she was saying it my, my crotch was cuter back then? Uh, okay. Before you ask, just to be clear, I've never actually tried to show her to do her. I've grown quite splendidly. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Not only is he bigger, but he has a little mustache now. Oh my gosh. Being so engorged with energy every morning is quite a problem, though. I'll introduce you next time, so be sure to greet him properly. Don't say next time. Right now is fine. How about letting the guy... Uh, wow, we on wow. How about letting the guy get a fresh breath of moaning air? I don't think I've ever heard you talk so dirty you could smell it fouling up the morning air before. We aren't sure just act like an old man sometimes. Gotcha. Time for the big reveal. Hope you don't regret it. I right, as my hand reached for the fly, we began to ramble in a near panic. Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Red face and flustered, Renner tried to play dumb, but it was obvious she knew exactly what we were talking about. How was it? How was it? Seeing the city again. Mian switched gears, dropping the dirty talk and changing to a topic to more, something more benefiting to the befitting the pleasant morning. I only went for a funeral. I didn't have much time. So yeah, did you look for it? That thing I asked for? You're not listening at all. I just came back from a funeral. Didn't have any time to look around and in toy stores. <coughs> toy stores and hobby shops are completely different, you know. It's really difficult to get Western stuff around here after all. Is this about games again, Michan? Mia nodded proudly as Runner giggled. Yep, I wanted Kate Chan to bring me back some Westport catalogs. A Westport catalog, you see? Westport was hurt for Western imported games. Using that abbreviation did make it sound pretty geeky. You can just send them. Just get. You can just get them to send one in your mail, can't you? Well, I guess I have to now. I'm going to get another game full of hot action. This this time I like the game and for it easy to understand. Men's a board and card game enthusiast. I hear she's collected quite a lot of different ones. According to Rena, Mian's room has kind of become a museum for domestic and foreign games. If there's a game that you think I understand, let me play too. <laughs> of course. If Kate chans up for it, I want to warn you though, we're pretty tough. Just what I want. I play all sorts of games. I don't need to I don't intend to lose. 
Whoa. Then we'll let you in our group this time, I guess. I guess? Bristling with joy from head to toe, Rena looked back and forth between me and Mion. Mion gave her an affirmative wink, and her expression perked up even further. Further. I thought boys were preferring to play outside more, so I figured you wouldn't want to. Rena laughed happily. In such a friendly conversation, you wouldn't even think I'd moved here in less than a month ago. I understood that they all... Yeah, I understood that they did... I, they, 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 I understood that they did all they could to make a transfer student like me feel at home. I'll have to try harder to fit in so they won't feel like they have to try to make me feel welcome. I felt that I acted a bit more open than, usual, than I usually am. Should it be possible to be right about this place. Hinamazawa was a really small village, not only because there was only a school, but there was only one class. The class was a com that class encompasses all different grades and ages. There are about 30 students in different, at different levels, and they all study in the same class. I'm told that long ago there used to be a bigger school building that they actual, had actual separate classes. However, it seems that something happened to make them become a single class, and now it's stayed that way out of tradition. I was shocked at first, but humans adapt pretty quickly. I've already gotten quite used to it. The sound of children playing started right from the morning. With such a lively mood, it felt more like a kindergarten than a proper school. <laughs> and not that it was, that was a bad thing. Mion, who had been walking in front of us, is up until then. Suddenly, let me take the lead. Right in front of the classroom door. So I meant I, I was meant to slap the door open and enter the room first. <laughs> Too bad I wasn't going to fall for that again. To think you've given up your lead here. You meant for this to be a test of my skills. Me unchuckled with a haughty smirk on her face. What, what is it, you guys? Step back, Rena, it's dangerous. She's here. Huh? Then, S Satoko chan is. Satoko chan. Her name is Sotoko Hojo. Satoko. 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 Satoko Hojo. She was a disrespectful, impudent, bossy kid. The way she talks was annoying. It would be more immature to get worked up over just that. The real problem was this. Quite obvious, quite the obvious trap. A blackboard eraser wedged between the door. It's too obvious, Satoko. A haughty laugh came from beyond the door. Excellent, Kei-chan. I guess you means I win this round. No, this is the Toko we're talking about. I doubt this is it. After falling for such er intri intricate traps since the day I transferred, no longer I no longer left my guard down. Satoko liked to combine a variety of traps. Traps that were simply there to bait you into the main one. Traps that relentlessly kept you coming like a sadistic Ruby Goldberg machine. The list goes on. As well as being clever, they almost never miss fire. Within, when you least expect it, she strikes. No escape. No time to relax. By the looks of it, the racer is normal. No rocks or anything in, any in it. I looked pretty heavy hit. I took a pretty heavy hit from the blackboard eraser loaded with the rocks on my first day. So why don't you just open the door and let it drop? That's what it is. That's what Satoko was after. Making me focus my attention on upward, so I lifted my hand to the door. There were thumbtacks stuck to the sliding door handle tape. A frightening trap. A potent and terrifying trap. Concealed by using a blackboard eraser. An impressive combination, Sotoko. 
but in the end, nothing more than the trivial machinations of a child. I assured my victory and threw the door open and stepped into the room. I felt something strange hit at my ankle. It was similar to the sensation of a jump rope catching my leg. By the time I realized she had me, look, hook, line, and sinker, it was already too late. I began to fall in the most picturesque manner. Kei-chan, watch out! Instinct instinctively reacting to Mion's shrill warning, I twisted my body in the mad air before I landed on the floor. Ow, ow, ow! An ink stone filled to the brim was plaked right in where I would land. Yeah. An ink stone filled to the brim was landed, was placed right where I would have landed. I shuddered, imagining the situation that had I landed square on it. Oh man, my my, what do we have here? Fair morning to you, Keiichi san. Aren't we a lively one this morning? Still sprawled in the awkward position, I was greeted by the mocking voice. <sighs> that was a step up from your usual trap, Satoko. I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. You're quick, right? Unlucky this morning. You little. Ow, 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 ow. It seemed to inadvertently sprain my back when I was. when I'd landed. Better than landing on inkstone. A small headed. A small hand gently rubbed my head. Pain, pain, go away! The small, dainty hand continued to stroke my head. You didn't sprain your back or anything, did you? If you rub it, like this, the pain disappears. I thought about asking about how rubbing my head would help my back, but I didn't. It's not like much, it's not so much about what you actually do, it's the thought that counts. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Rika-chan. The pain's going away now. Yay! Rika-chan, good morning! Good morning to you, Rena. And a good morning to all. Rika-chan greeted each of us with an adorable little bow. It was infectious. Rena, Mion, and I bowed back. You're such a good kid, Rika-chan. So much better than Satoko. I glared over in her direction. Satoko was whistling while rather deliberately trying to avoid eye contact. I'm the very model of a good girl. A good girl would set those nasty traps. Nothing but lies and slander. Exactly what poof. Wah! I picked up Satoko by the back of her collar. She looks like a misbehaved cat when I do this. But a cat wouldn't be setting traps. She's a much harder to deal with. I'm sorry. Try saying, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Try saying that. If you don't say it. I cocked my index finger on my thumb, letting it tremble as I brought it closer to Satoko's forehead. I'm against violence. You don't even have any proof. Just so you know, my forehead flick. Just so you know, my forehead flick really hurts. It can split plywood right in half. Ah! Stop! Get away! Get away! You beast! Don't say that in a people. Don't say that in a way people will misunderstand. A small hand tugged the back of my shirt. She's been lonely since you were gone for two days. Rika Chan is really just so. How could I do anything more than just being told that? I gently released my grip on Satoko, who at this point was on the verge of tears. She still had her eyes clamped shut as she braced herself with a forehead flick. Wow! It doesn't bother me! Ah! You mustn't cry, Satoko. Keep on fighting. Yeah. Rika gently petted the head of her prankster friend. You wouldn't ever guess that those two are the same age. I think Satoko could learn a thing or, uh, or a million from Rika-chan. Next time, set an even more amazing trap. Oh god, no. Wait a minute. 
As she observed the scene, Rika's expression grew ecstatic as she began to swoon. Oh, sadoko chan is crying. So cute. You can take them home. Oh, they're so cute. You can't, no matter how cute they are. What is for a bit is fine. Is fine? We didn't get to cutesy face as even, even as outrageous ideas spewed from her mouth. According to Mion, she's ridiculously weak to cute things and always tries to take them home. Object or person. Stealing is bad, but abducting people is even worse. Give it up. Then I just... Then can I just look? Just looking? That should be fine, right? Right? Rena swooned over Satoko's crying form. Either if a girl goes missing in Hinamazawa, I'll be forced to turn Rena into the authorities. Forgive me, Rena. I'll be sure to bring you a care pack bring you care packages when they put you away. The teacher's coming. Quickly, clean everything up! Inkstone is yours, right? Just from Mion's single statement, the entire mood of the classroom shifted back to normal. The inkstone was bad, but the thumbtacks on the, to the door were handle were even bigger problem. I pulled the tape off carefully to make sure not to skewer myself. Even though Satoka was the one who set it up, everyone had to pick up after her. Alright guys, this is going to do it for episode number one of Higurashi no Nakakoro ni, or Higurashi When They Cry, chapter one. And uh, hopefully I can get done with this before November 13th, which is probably not going to happen, before Watanakashi, the second chapter. This is Doro DS, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.